Hello guys and welcome to Linux Ort. In this video we want to talk about the new OpenSUSE Leap version 16 and there are some major changes. We have support for only Wayland, we have sys5 init support which has been also dropped but also we have a new Agama installer on which we will have a look in the second and also the for me shocking news is that the traditional YAST stack or YAST stack is now retired and it is replaced by cockpit for the system management. To be honest, it isn't bad at all, but it isn't a complete replacement of YAST, for example, and also of Merlin, which is a drop-in replacement for the YAST software stack. And just to give you a brief look about Merlin, it's a cute based, very new package manager, which now replaces a YAST uh, in the software stack and to be honest it looks kind of okay it's look it looks kind of traditional but to be honest this isn't for me a very good replacement um, in terms of Yast because it doesn't seem to bring any new big functionality to Yast and um, yeah it's kind of old I would say but of course on the open user machines themselves there are also I would say discover or gnome software installed as a more graphical um, user interface with some more pictures and some kind of convenience features so this is okay but to be honest if we have a look to cockpit I don't know if you know cockpit yet let me show it to you very quick here we have cockpit uh, it's um, developed by the red hat project and uh, here we have it also for fit Oh, silver blue kind of cool yeah we have some web based uh, front end which is by default on the port 9999 I guess and yeah we could um, define some things like yeah we see our overview we can define our storage we could also define our accounts uh, we could um, view into some log files but this isn't a one-to-one -one replacement to yes to be honest it um, also handled some things which are were also handled by Yast. but for example if it comes to the printer management. To be honest, the printer management was very, very bad with Yast. There isn't any replacement inside this OpenCC Leap uh, blog post. So honestly, I'm not too convinced in this change here. But um, yeah, we will have a look about these traditional Yast stack at a later point of time. For now, let's have a look to the new Agama installer and let's try it out. For me also the first time. This installer is completely web-based and now we could select a product. So you only need one ISO and then you can select if you want to install the Leap software here, if you want, want to install micro OS, if you want to install slow roll or if you want to install the Tumbleweed version. Tumbleweed is the rolling release uh, distribution which is very popular right now, which is I would say at the time one of the best editions of OpenSUSE. Slow roll is the new kind of thing which is mixing up leap and tumbleweed so to say we see here okay it updates less often than tumbleweed but more often than leap without forcing users to choose between stable and newer packages so yeah the sweet spot between them and this is also kind of new let's have a look how this is going in the future also open user micro os which is the atomic distribution which is relatable for example to fedora silver blue i would say let's select a leap six because we want to discover this in a some future videos here so we are loading our installation this looks kind of cool yeah it's completely web based as you see here leap 16 beta we see some preparations and here we are in the very new installation so we have our localization um, the system will use english united states as its default language okay we have the storage very cool uh, it's just proposing us everything so we could just hit install here not possible with the current step click to know more okay uh, we need to define a user okay setting the root password or an ssh public key is required okay perfect so we have to um, go to authentication would be great if we get here some kind of next button for example or take me to the authentication or here just a setup authentication then and then after install 
Do you know what I mean? Kind of this. But now let's have a look to hostname. We could set a static hostname. What a great feature, to be honest. We don't want to use this in many normal desktop distributions, but okay, this is fine. We are using the transient hostname VBox. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Localization. Now we have our localization here. Why could we choose our hostname before the localization? Yeah, just asking um, some questions, but this is okay. Now we could define our local selection. My local is Ireland. Let's have a look here, Irish. Perfect. We have our uh, keyboard setting here, uh, English US. This is not fine. I'm um, using the UK one. Okay. But uh, this um, keyboard selection is kind of okay, to be honest. We have a great search here. We have selection. That, that's fine. That's fine. Euro Berlin is also wrong. We need Dublin. And now I'm fine with it. Yeah, we have to click on change, change, change. To be honest, this is um, like the uh, old, I guess it was called Anaconda installer or Fedora um, or Red Hat based distributions. Not a big fan of them also. It could have gone worse, to be honest. So then network, yeah, okay. We could connect to a Wi-Fi network here. Very, very important. Okay, very, very good. We also have some storage selection here. And um, this is now kind of advanced as we see it here. Uh, just let me have a quick look. Could we press Alt 11 here? No, we couldn't press Alt 11. I'm just expecting that we are in kind of an open box environment. Could I press F5? Yeah, we could press F5. Okay. Could we press Control Tab? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's in Firefox. <laughs> if we press Control Tab, then we see Firefox here. <laughs> Very cool. So yeah, you could escape out of this. <laughs> Just a small challenge. So okay, use this disk to install and boot is fine. All content will be deleted. Perfect. Then we can shrink existing partitions, use available space. This looks very major uh, already, I would say. This looks very good. We create a new ButterFS partition. We create a new swap partition. And we could edit this here. For example, if I want to make the swap partition a bit bigger, then we could say, ah, okay, um, calculate it automatically, or we could set it, for example, to why do we set a minimum and maximum, to be honest? Um, this is kind of weird. Um, let's go with, for example, four gigabytes here and also minimum four gigabytes. Okay, same as minimum. Okay, none. The petition can grow to use all the contiguous free space. Ah, okay. So yeah, I don't know why we should um, define this here, but now we are getting 10 gigs of swap petition. Okay, I don't want to do this. Let's head over. Okay, max maximum. Okay, same as minimum. So this is this is the thing we want to use, I guess. Except now we are at four gigabytes. Yeah, this is a very new option to choose your size, to be honest. I would also prefer only giving it a size and not choosing this minimum maximum. This is very cool to, for programming, but not if I want to install it as a user. We could also change boot options. We could uh, also configure some ICSI targets and we could also define some volume groups. We couldn't define any rates here, but this is okay. Uh, we are only on open user leap, but maybe if we want to use it as a server, I don't know, could be handy. Encryption, we could encrypt the disk. Very, very good. So I would say, let's just do this. I type in a very simple password just for testing here. And um, yeah, the rest looks very good. And we are also getting a GPT partition because we are in BIOS mode, we get a BIOS boot partition. This all looks fine. Now we are getting to software and then we see here, okay, our installation will now take 2.1 gigs, change selection, and then we can select, okay, what do we want to install? We could install SE Linux support. We could also uh, disable this, also very cool. Software management, this pattern provides a graphical application and command line tool for keeping your system up to date. Please give me that. Um, and we could change between KDE and GNOME here. So I'm selecting, let us say KDE. For me, OpenSUSE was always only KDE. <laughs> uh, multimedia functionality of the software, very cool. We could also select some server functions, file server, mail server, web and LAMP server, internet gateway, something for a VPN, okay. LDAP, for example, KVM host server, great primary functions for cockpit. Here, pattern for cockpit, a web-based remote system management interface. So this is 
our replacement? No, this is another thing. Okay, and um, this isn't a replacement for cockpit, but where we could install cockpit or is it installed by default with software management? Honestly, I don't know. Let's search for cockpit. Yeah, there isn't anything else, but uh, I guess this is okay. So I select uh, close here and we now see oh, installation will take 5.6 gigabytes. That's a lot, but I would say, uh, let's take that and select authentication here. And then we see here, okay, we could define a first user or we could only define a root through user. Very, very uh, neat, to be honest, this uh, installation setup. The whole installation setup has a, a very different approach and um, it isn't bad, I would say, it isn't bad. So now I would say, yeah, okay, I, I get a password here as a root user. Um, define a user for me. I'm Jean and username is Jean. I'm taking it. Type in a password here and accept this one. Perfect. Now I can hit install. What we could select here. Okay, change product, download logs, installer options. What are installer options? Ah, okay, the keyboard lay layout also here. Okay, this isn't, this is nice to be honest, because if I would have typed in a, a password in another keyboard layout, then this will mess up everything. They have to ask in the first what uh, keyboard layout they wanna use, because this was um, still the uh, US keyboard. Afterwards, we brought up our localization. This is kind of bad, but um, yeah, the rest looks kind of good. It's, it's a beta version, so nothing to blame or not too much to blame here. And um, now it's installing the system. We don't see too much logs. Download logs, we could download the logs. <laughs> Here we see Firefox, okay, okay. But this is okay, this is fine for now. What are you thinking about the new Agama installer? And uh, of course, what are you also thinking about um, ditching out the traditional Yast stack? I'm um, not too happy about this, but honestly, I'm not an open user, no user so this yeah is, doesn't belong to me too much, but I would say, yeah, Yast was a very, very big pillar of open user, and now this uh, breaks away. Um, for me, very, very sad. What are you thinking about? And what are you thinking about the new Agama installer? Just write it me into the comments. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.